Right uh, now we will talk about the alternative routes of iron making. So, in this lecture uh, I would be uh, talking some of the processes by which we make the iron either in the solid form or in liquid form. So, these alternate routes of iron making um, it came into existence mostly because due to unavailability of high quality raw materials such as high grade iron ore and high ranking coke. At, so, at many places uh, due to depletion of high grade iron ore and generation of more fines it was difficult to operate large furnace or some alternative route of iron making was thought to uh, create. So, this uh, low grade iron ore and the fines can be used and in fact, uh, another driving force has been is the absence of high ranking coke in many of the country in some countries uh, there is a depletion in the uh, high ranking coal actually. So, by which you can make the coke. So, these two were quite driving force and uh, lately environmental problem associated with the blast furnace and with many other uh, industries beside iron and steel industries, power industries and other has forced um, iron making uh, companies to look for some alternative by which environment problem associated to it can be reduced. So, green um, house emission of the gases uh, can be reduced and third is a high capital costs related to the blast furnace operation. Uh, this is also an important factor when uh, uh, there is a small city or like that and you need the supply of the iron uh, liquid iron and to make the steel, then one cannot afford to have a uh, big blast furnace at a very high uh, investment. So, that led to development again to an other alternative routes of iron making. So, this led to the development of direct reduction, smelting reduction, mini blast furnace and other new emerging and future technologies. So, so in this one we will be talking more about these technologies what have been uh, come into existence until now. So, the first one which is quite old is direct reduction. So, what in short form we call DR processes. So, a process in which metallic iron is produced by the reduction of iron ore below its melting points. So, remember this is below its melting point. So, the product would be solid. Usually, the reductants are natural gas or coal based materials. The product is known as direct reduced iron or sponge iron. So, DRI in short what you call it, it is a direct reduced iron which is mostly in the solid semi fused form. So, because it is done below the, the melting point of it. Essentially, it is a process which occurs in the stake region of a blast furnace which has been discussed in details in this course. So, you are already aware about the iron making in the blast furnace and in very detail we have discussed about the reaction which are occurring in the blast furnace in various zones, but especially in the stake region where the reduction of uh, iron oxide in various forms from hematite to magnetite to bustite occurs 
these those reaction are applicable even to the direct reduce uh, direct redu reduction because even in the upper part of the blast furnace in the stake region iron uh, whatever is reduced is still uh, in the solid form um, and not in the liquid form and same thing happens even in uh, direct reduction. So, there is a big familiarity not in terms of uh, just physical even the chemical reaction or physical chemical way uh, whatever processes are occurring in the upper part of the blast furnace same uh, thing can be applied to the direct reduction processes. So, most of the processes therefore, have the reduction shaft similar to the blast furnace stake either in peg bed or fluidized form. So, that is actually one difference. So, it can be either in a pegged or fluidized form uh, where it is reduced um, into um, solid iron. So, the main advantage of DRI is elimination of coke and thus reducing some and environmental related problem. So, you must be aware that uh, coke making is a very nasty or dirty process which involves uh, volatilization of coal the coke oven and that creates lots of environmental problems. So, this is the biggest advantage of DRI that uh, you do not need coke as a, as a reductant, but you can use the coal for that purpose and in that way you also reduce some environmental related problem and it is much more advantageous uh, uh, when in especially in those countries where uh, uh, high ranking coal is not there. So, one can use the coal and can make the DRI. So, it requires less capital and a smaller unit and the process control is easy because unit is small they are not much complications so process control becomes quite easy. However, it suffers from lower productivity naturally to a small unit and few other problems so productivity is low and final product has to be melted for further use which has less carbon content. And if you remember we it talked uh, already about uh, um, melting point and other uh, um, uh, uh, impurities with, uh, which can affect the melting point of iron. So, if the less carbon is there melting point usually becomes quite high. Uh, so, carbon reduce the melting point of iron quite substantially. So, here in DRI direct reduce arm you have a less carbon. So, you need then more energy to melt it later. High porosity in the final product and this leads to the reoxidation. So, due to the because it is the form of in the sponge more porosity is there it get reduced. So, due to that lots of porosity is there in the reduced solid iron and when it comes out. So, that time one has to be very careful it should not be exposed to the air uh, otherwise it may reoxidize. and it is not only that even a storage problem in trans during transportation it may lead to the reoxidation. So, these are some associated problem with the DRI, but uh, it can be uh, easily handled. So, before describing the kinetics and reduction mechanism of direct reduction, there are, are two terms which one should be familiar of. And usually DRI is quantified in terms of percentage reduction of iron or and percentage of metallization. Sometimes you call it degree of metallization. So, these are defined below. So, when you say percent reduction it is actually nothing it is a ratio of weight of oxygen removed from the ore and weight of oxygen present in it into 100. 
So, that gives you the percentage reduction. So, whatever oxygen is removed from the ore and the total oxygen which is present in it uh, divide by that and multiply by 100 will give you percent reduction. Then, so, <coughs> the above the definition also uh, has come due to the gradual removal of oxygen atoms from the iron oxide as shown below. So, as he said the um, it is a removal of oxygen from the ore and the total oxygen present. So, if you look at the way uh, ore uh, or iron oxide is present in any of the iron ore, first one is hematite which, which you are already aware. So, when it goes to hematite to magnetite, it uh, actually removes about 48 atoms of the um, uh, for uh, three at sort of oxygen is removed, whether you can say in moles or kg moles or gram moles. So, the, uh, that much oxygen is removed from hematite to magnetite, and when from magnetite to bustite it is reduced, 80 moles sort of oxygen is removed uh, in terms of ten, tons or kg when you do it, and from our so, per ton basis we take it 48 kg, 80 kg and from bustite to iron about 302 kg of oxygen one has to remove, then you get iron. So, the, you can see from bustite to iron the maximum oxygen is removed. So, oxygen removed from each oxide is shown above the arrow in each step and has been discussed before in previous lectures. So, if you go the physical chemical uh, behavior of the uh, iron oxide in the blast furnace uh, where we uh, uh, discuss in detail about the reaction kinetics reduction of iron oxide in various way and uh, even the uh, optimization in that one all these things uh, have been described. So, I would encourage you to go to those lectures and in brief I will also take it again here. So, based on percentage reduction it can be estimated that the percent reduction in each step would be 11.1. So, from Fe 2 or 3 to Fe 3 or 4 it would be 11.1 from Fe 3 or 4 to Fe o is 29.7 and from Fe o to Fe 100 percent. Um, percent reduction. So, it is clear from the percentage reduction that up to almost 30 percent if you look at up to here up to almost 30 percent reduction of iron ore no metallic iron is formed only bustite will form. So, it starts forming only after 30 percent reduction. So, therefore, one has to define a, a degree of metallization of our percentage of metallization in a different way, because only after 30 percent of reduction the metallic ion come into the picture. So, the extent of metallic ion formed is given by percentage of metallic ion equal to weight of metallic iron divided by total iron weight in the sample into 100 that will give you the percentage. So, weight of metallic iron which is formed divided by the total iron weight in the sample that will give you the metallization or degree of metallization. So, per percent metallization and percent reduction are correlated as. So, it is a empirical correlation which uh, has been found between the degree of metallization and uh, degree of uh, reduction. So, percent on um, metallization equal to 1.43 into 
percent reduction minus 42.3. So, from this equation you can see this is a linear equation. Uh, there is a linear re a relation between the percent metallization and the percent reduction. So, when you um, draw a line it will give you a straight line cutting on the x axis. So, and if you know the percent reduction you can probably from this relation uh, calculate the um, degree of metallization. Um, so, once now you are familiar for this because this term usually uh, degree of metallization and percentage reduction is uh, quite useful in describing the efficiency of the DRI process and more than 90 percent degree of metallization is needed in direct reduction process. So, 94, 93, 95 percent or so and sometime even up to 90. 6 7 percent. Now, it is about the uh, kinetics and reduction mechanism which is again an essential part for any of the process or new process we have. So, kinetics of the process is similar to the blast furnace stack region which has been discussed in details in the previous lectures. However, just to summarize the most common reaction are written below. So, based on both CO CO 2 ratio this is uh, CO CO 2 means mostly the coal based reaction and H 2 H 2 ratio this is actually you get mostly from the natural uh, gas based reaction. Um, so, DRI direct reduction can occur by two of the process which we will discuss uh, uh, in detail later. So, these two processes are either coal based so carbon is a reductant or natural gas. So, hydrogen is a reductant in combination with the carbon also CO plus uh, H 2. So, um, we have already discussed uh, about this, uh, um, this system and carbon oxygen system uh, if you go back to our previous lecture and similarly about this we have discussed a bit uh, in relation even to the um, uh, discussing about uh, uh, injection of uh, mo uh, uh, moisture um, as to our oxygen uh, through the TUR in order to increase the uh, reduction efficiency of the gas and that time we discuss about this system also. So, um, I, I would encourage you to go through that, but in brief I am taking it again here, but I will not go much into the detail because this has already been discussed before. So, three thermodynamically stable species of iron oxide as you are aware uh, hematite, magnetite and boostite uh, this is stoichiometry uh, this uh, uh, oxygen uh, uh, um, uh, association or the percentage uh, associated with ion uh, changes. So, it is not a stable oxide which uh, we said bef uh, uh, before also. So, hematite due to magnetite due to boostite and gives the ion and this uh, is a partial um, oxidation of the carbon which gives you the CO and uh, heat is required for that. But for complete combustion you get the CO2 and heat is released uh, um, in that way you produce more heat. And um, uh, if you uh, look at the previous lecture and go through this uh, we have already discussed about this reaction how uh, hematite uh, converted into magnetite um, by CO at 900 degree centigrade. So, we are here talking about the DRI which is usually the temperature is about na, uh, 9 uh, in fact temperature ranges from 700 to um, 1000 or sometime sometime only to 1100 it may go. So, it is mostly in that range but usually this is sort of a temperature which is maintained uh, in most of the reduction shaft in uh, DRI or even in the uh, fluidized bed 
about 750 or like that sort of temperature 700. So, uh, this all reactions uh, and their kinetics is applicable even for DRI. So, hematite to magnetite at 900 delta G was given. So, if you look at the equilibrium constant is uh, very high and that uh, gives uh, uh, the percent of CO utilization almost 0. So, it is very easily reduced which we discussed before and from magnetite to um, wustite it is um, the K2 is low and it is about 0.25 this ratio comes. So, the this uh, still needs a less CO, but can be reduced uh, more comfortably, uh, but of course, harder than the um, magnetite. And when it, we go to the uh, FeO to Fe, and uh, then your uh, equilibrium constant value is very low. So, you need a high reduction potential or high reducing power of the um, gases. So, that is where you have CO2 ratio of 2.3 and it is clearly also uh, we talked about the efficiency of the reaction and utilization of the CO factor when we um, put it this uh, ratio for respective of these three reaction we will find hematite to magnetite is almost 100 percent CO utilization and for others for um, magnetite to boostite it is about 80 per 80 percent utilization that factor uh, so it decreases. However, because here you really need a very high reduction potential and the utilization factor for from boostite to iron is just about 30 percent. So, again which means uh, you have to um, introduce a very high reduction potential gases from the bottom. So, FeO can reduce into iron and it then loses this uh, uh, reduction potential power. So, and which you do not need that much uh, in the upper, upper it goes up in the upper, upper part of this shaft whether it is a um, blast furnace or uh, uh, direct reduction. So, it can easily reduce uh, um, magnetite to um, bustite and uh, then you need a very little uh, uh, CO percent or the reduction potential to convert hematite into magnetite. So, from the bottom you send a high potential uh, reducing cases. Um, so, it can reduce bustite to iron. So, this is uh, uh, FeO uh, carbon system. Of course, uh, because these has been taken from the uh, uh, previous lectures. So, here this is not applicable because uh, this uh, this is a separate part of producing uh, reducing gases in uh, um, uh, in direct reduction processes uh, while in blast furnace it is in one reactor it is a part of it. So, we want uh, so, this is not relevant to the direct reduction process. However, these reactions are quite relevant to uh, direct redu reduction processes that hematite to magnetite, magnetite to boostite and boostite to iron um, uh, and below 1000 degree or 9 is CO is a bit unstable and goes to CO2. So, overall reaction if want to give in the upper region then by gauge reduction it can be written in this way um, which is sort of indirect reduction which has been discussed quite in detail previously and similarly with the other way in form of uh, um, with the carbon with above uh, the overall reaction takes in this form which sometimes you also call the direct reduction if it is lower part of the blast furnace, but this is not uh, relevant to the direct reduction process and mostly this is the one which is more relevant. And the overall reduction reaction by the hydrogen usually, so this is mostly by carbon and this is mostly by hydrogen the way you give overall reaction with the CO, this overall reaction with hydrogen similarly it is given uh, by this reaction from hematite to 
ion the overt reaction. N now, here hydrogen actually you get it through the natural gas. So, these are the gas ba based redux uh, reduction whatever we discussed here these are the coal based or solid uh, sort of based reaction through which you get the CO and this is a natural gas based rea uh, DRI reduction and usually in the natural gas methane is the major part of it. So, you can't use uh, as such the natural gas. So, it needs reforming. So, before utilization of it. So, major component in natural gas is methane which is uh, reformed by oxidation it is a methane, ethane other uh, hydrocarbons. So, by oxidation in presence of suitable catalyst usually it is nickel we will talk a little later and the right temperatures. So, it gives a mixture of hydrogen and CO. So, by adjusting the temperature uh, catalyst pressure and other parameters the one can adjust this ratio. So, can have a high reduce uh, re highly reducible, uh, reducible gas from the reformer. Uh, so, natural gas one first pass through the reformer and then these cases are used for the reduction purpose. So, so in case of hydrogen just pure hydrogen the process is usually is chemically controlled, uh, uh, but in case of CO it is uh, uh, both chemical and diffusion control gas diffusion it could be even combination depends on many situations. Porous iron oxide the activation energy much lower in porous iron oxide and process is controlled mostly by gaseous diffusion if iron oxide is very if it is ve uh, very porous then even uh, we will talk about that a little later. Now uh, many times what happen uh, carbon deposition occurs. Um, and this actually we had discussed uh, again in the uh, in terms of blast furnace that Budot reaction carbon deposition reaction. So, that is uh, also occur at less than 900 degrees Celsius and sometimes the cementite is also formed and sometimes it is uh, good in direct reduction it reduces a little melting point and not on only that um, also it is uh, uh, reoxidation of iron. Uh, uh, is prevented or at least it is reduced by forming this uh, uh, iron carbide and this in one way also good when it is used as a feed. So, carbon percentage is increased in that way. So, prevent reoxidation lower the melting point of TRI when this reaction occurs and sometimes uh, it is needed to do this.